Welcome! This is a video for dbapresents.com. This is a second part of a presentation about database schema versioning. If you haven't watched the first part, please do so. It describes the problem of versioning and the concept of incremental SQL scripts that is a solution to it. This time I will present one of the tools that supports that concept. The tool I'm going to talk about is Liquibase. I plan to shortly describe the idea behind it and show how it works in a practical scenario. Let's start with a short introduction. Let's assume our company has a product. Currently, the latest version is free. As the product uses a database, a version of database schema is also free. The schema contains some tables, columns, foreign keys, etc. A team is working on a next release, version 4. During a development process, a new table is created, some columns are added, some other are dropped. As I said, version 3 of the product has already been released. Version 4 has already been developed. And the key question is how to upgrade existing product installations of version 3 to version 4 without losing data stored in version 3. And here is where Liquibase comes into play. You can find Liquibase on liquibase.org website. It is licensed under the Apache 2.0 license. Liquibase is a software installed on a developer computer. It works with the most popular Deco, SQL Server, Sybase, DB2 and more. For purpose of this presentation, I will use SQL Server 2014 to show you how it works. And when first connected to a database, it creates two tables for its internal purposes. Before I start, uh, before I start showing you how it can be used, take a look at uh, how to set it up. Getting it ready to work is extremely simple. First, you can download uh, it from liquibase.org. Extract it to a local directory and then you can add the directory path to the environmental environment path variable. And that is it. Liquibase is ready to work. As you can see, I have Liquibase located in program files on C drive, path variable properly set up, so I can execute liquibase.bat from a different directory. It executes properly, print, uh, properly printing a help screen with a list of commands and parameters. Let's assume I have just made a decision to develop a new application with my team. I have created a database that will be used by this application. The database is called my database and it is empty. There are no tables in it. I create database changelog.sql file in my project directory. This file has to have a header that will tell Liquibase that it is a SQL file. It is necessary because a few different file formats are supported. I will tell you more later about uh, the formats. In the presentation I will use SQL format. I will be adding SQL scripts to this file uh, so it should be treated as all other source, codes, uh, source, code, source code files in my project. For example, it should be checked into a source code repository like git or subversion. As I haven't made any change yet, I leave this file just with the header. As you remember, I said Liquibase requires two tables, which are not yet created. Fortunately, I do not need to do it manually, I can let Liquibase do the job. I just need to make a Liquibase connect to my database. I can use update command from liquibase.bat. Additionally, I need to pass a few parameters to tell uh, the tool which JDBC driver to use, its location, database URL, and credentials. You can see them on the screen. Now I click enter. It takes a few seconds to connect to the database, checks, uh, check its state and it's done. I can verify two tables were created in my database. Now let me quickly describe what those tables are for. On the slide, 
you can see a sample content of the database changelog table. Each row represents a change made to the database. It contains many, more or less useful information about the change like timestamp when it was applied, who created the scripts for the change, etc. The first two columns identify a change, ID and author. Even if you may think that change ID should be enough to know which change it is about, developers of Liquibase decided to use author column also to avoid ID conflicts. It's easier to tell each developer to maintain their own uh, sequence of numbers, making sure they are unique, than to secure uniqueness of IDs across the whole development team. As a result, each change is identified by author name and change ID. Each change visible in the table comes from the changelog file, which in our case is called database changelog.sql. If Liquibase is requested to upgrade the database structure to the latest version of database changelog.sql, there is nothing simpler. It looks into database changelog table, compare it to content of the file, and very easily decide which changes are missing in the table. It is worth to mention that scripts in the file are marked with ID and author. Then there is nothing left besides executing the missing scripts from the file on the database and adding proper rows to the table. Finally, it's time to see how it works in practice. During the development process, I have written a script to create a table accounts. Uh, my change starts with a header that marks the change as the first one of all my changes. Uh, below, you can also notice there is a rollback section. It tells Liquibase how to roll back the change in case of problems or on request because later I can tell Liquibase to roll back my change. Now, I want to apply it on the database. To do so, I only need to execute liquibase.bat with update option. The same, the same one I used to create the two tables at the beginning. After doing this, the table shows up in, the, in my database. I think it's time to take a look at the database changelog table content. The first row showed up with a change ID 1 and of author me. Thanks to that, Liquibase will know in the future that this change will have already been executed and to not apply it again. However, the development has not finished yet and I need one more table and some initial data in both tables. All I need to do is to add the changes at the end of the file. Please notice, each of them has a rollback section at the end. Rollback of create table is to drop table. Rollback for inserting rows is deleting them. Now I'm going to use update option again to apply the latest database structure. The second table shows up and the initial data is inside. I'm sure you can easily guess content of database changelog table. Yes, it now contains three rows. Two new rows have just been added. Sometimes it happens that unexpected events occur, like a defect created during the development or just design alters, and some other and some previous changes are no longer needed or even must be rolled back. Although Liquibase have a few options to roll back, I'm going to use just one of them, a rollback count. It allows to roll back a bunch of last changes. In my example, I provide number 2, which means to roll back last two changes. Let's see what happens.
It's done. Transactions table disappeared like it would have never existed. It is interesting to verify content of database changelog table. Now it contains only the first row, which means the next two can still be applied on the, to the database. But I'm not going to do that now. Another developer, Miranda, looks at my scripts and discovers that a foreign key between accounts and transactions tables is missing. She creates a script to add it with her name and ID1 in the header. The script is added to changelog database changelog.sql. As you already know how to update database structure using update command, I will do a similar task using update SQL option. If you do not have administrator access to a database, you want to uh, to a database you want to update, for example, the database is hosted by your customer or there is a production DBA in your company and you need to provide uh, him with uh, SQL scripts, then update SQL option is for you. Instead, instead of applying the script to a database, it creates a SQL file that can be executed later. This is how syntax looks like. By default, SQL statements are produced to the standard output, but I redirect it to a file update.sql. After execution, update.sql file appears in the directory, project directory, and the file contains three missing changes. Mine 2 and 3 and Miranda's first one. You can see insert statements generated at the end of each change to add rows to database changelog. If your customer or a production DBA requires also rollback scripts, just in case, you can generate it by using future rollback SQL option. After execution, rollback.sql appears and it contains rollback scripts for each changes for each change from update.sql file in a reversed order. Please notice the file contains changes that has not yet been applied to the database. The file makes sense only after running update.sql. It is a very useful option because it allows preparing all scripts actually making and without actually making any change in the database. This is pretty much all that I wanted to show you. I can only tell you a little more about the liquid-based features that I did not cover in this presentation. You probably remember me mentioning at the beginning that for purpose of this presentation that I was going to use SQL format of database changelog file. So now I can tell you that you have a few other options. Liquibase supports XML in the first place. If you use this format, Liquibase understands your changes and can automatically infer from uh, what should a rollback script contain. For example, if your change is a table creation, you do not need to explicitly write that dropping the table is a rollback action, as I had to do in case of SQL format. This time Liquibase just knows it. If for some reasons you do not want to use XML, SQL, you can also choose YAM or JSON formats. Regarding other cool features, Liquibase commands can be executed not only from a command line, but it also integrates with AND and MAVEN. It can also be easily used in Java. During my presentation, I used only a few options out of many available in Liquibase. All of them can be found in the documentation. There exist various update and rollback options, but also you can tag a state of a database, Generate the Java doc document, generate the Java doc documentation, validate changelog for errors, and many more. I think you will find there exactly what you need. It seems like I told you everything I wanted to. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. For more database-related articles and presentations, please visit dbapresents.com.